I would like to call upon our next guest and our facilitator. Uh, she is uh, Ma'am Shilpi Saxena, uh, the Chief Human Resource Officer from the Golian Group. Now, we've heard about Golian Group a lot, and now we have Ma'am on stage, and she will take us through this session that's uh, titled Transforming HRM Culture. Uh, very interesting, uh, and uh, she will make us very active, and she's already on stage. So with a big round of applause uh, for her and for all of us inside the hall, uh, with an active participation, let's welcome her on stage, ma'am. The stage is yours now. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The last person in the room, can you hear me? Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. I stand on the stage today before you, and I would like to thank Mr. Ojha for inviting me over here, sir, giving me this quick, fast path to get introduced to the HR fraternity in Nepal, because I don't belong to this country. So thank you so much. Thank you for giving me this platform. Little about me, uh, so that I can offer my apologies beforehand, before I start my session. I don't speak Nepali. As yet, I am work in progress. I am learning. Hopefully, in a two or three months time frame, I'll be as conversant and as fluent in Nepali as you. So my medium of language will largely remain English. Everybody fine with that? With a Bollywood tadka thrown in in Hindi, is that okay with everybody? All right, thank you so much. Thank you for giving that confidence because I was nervous of not speaking the national language. So I see quite a few spots empty in the front, first, second, third rows, and quite a few spots overcrowded uh, towards the back of the hall. May I request, ladies and gentlemen, to come forward? Because I am very nervous, all right? So if you are nearer to me, it will give me more happiness and more confidence. So if people can move themselves from the last rows towards the front rows, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for taking the lead. Hands, please. Expected, because it's an HR meet. How many of you are from the business background, but not belonging to HR as a function? Thank you. At least three, four people. How many of you are business owners here and do not come under the category of employee? Okay. We'll wait for that day when the business owners are sitting in this particular meet. We all, many of you would have this as your first job, wherever you are working currently, right? But many of you would be on to second, third, or into the power plus one ranking in the job. And throughout your professional journey, you have had various experiences, right? Uh, so I, I need a lot of, you know, interaction with the um, community that I'm speaking to. So thumbs up or hands are very welcome. How many of you are on your at least third job? Great. More than five? Fantastic. More than 10? All right. So for an HR professional, I am an HR professional, did my MBA from Lucknow University. Lucknow is a city very near to Nepal Ganj in the state of Uttar Pradesh, India. I did my MBA, and in the same university, I have submitted my doctorate into, guess the topic, culture management during mergers and acquisitions. In my lifespan, professional span of 30 years, I have handled four major mega mergers in the companies. Two where we were merging with the other partner, two where we were acquiring the other partners, and huge learnings. Hope to, uh, hope to share those experiential learnings with you today. In my previous assignment, I was working for a very large group based out of Bangalore, which is the uh, next Silicon Valley, slated to be the next Silicon Valley of the world. 
um, city of entrepreneurs, startups, young, youngsters, techies, city that I love. I worked there for 15 years, very large group as a head of HR. Created generational change, transformational change, something which I enjoy. We are all HR professionals over here in the various stages of our professional HR journey, right? Most of us take an entry as talent acquisition. Some of us take entry as admin. Few of us from an accounting background come into the field of HR as payroll, right? And then we start our journey, journey of evolution. Then we go to assistant manager, or we go to an assistant manager, talent specialist, or a payroll, or X, Y, Z, compartmentalization of HR. I started as a supervisor shop floor in a manufacturing organization. My job was to do the headcount for contract workers who, are, who would come every day. Got elevated to getting to get the contract workers, hiring the contract workers, specific to the jobs in a manufacturing concern. Jump ships for 700 rupees INR per month. Truth, okay? I am telling this about myself because in this room today, anybody who wants to stay in this room, please stay in this room and dare to be truthful to yourself. So there will be a game, there is a very famous game. What is it called? Truth or dare. So we are going to play only the game of truth over here. Because if you are not truthful over here, the topic that I am speaking, transformation, culture or not, whatever, is not going to work over here. In my last organization, I was working for a super brand of India which specialized in Making mattresses. What are mattresses used for? Sleeping. Right? For 15 years of my life, I am trained to make people sleep. Give them a good night's sleep. And in this session, after the sumptuous lunch of this meat, I am expected to wake you people up. Keep you up. I promise you will remain up. Heavy session, long session, but hope, learning session. The truth is, if you are here for anything else except learning, feel free to move out now. Because if you sit in this session and do not take the learning away, the money that has been spent on you by your organization goes waste. Right? We have our reasons and I have done the journey. Southeast Asia's largest HR meet, World HRD Congress, okay? Dr. Raju Kulkarni. And from the journey of, oh, skipping office for, you know, two days. Let me go. Let me enjoy the meals. Let me enjoy the sessions. Have a good time. Network. Meet probable employers. I have traveled too. Okay? I wasn't born into this role. So from all of this, I have come to a journey of truth and destination. Truth is very necessary when we talk about culture at any workplace. What is the culture that we come from and what do we understand? Very loosely spoken term, culture, culture. This is not our culture. We expect you to do this in our culture. We want this to be done in our culture. What is this word culture? Anybody? I would request the volunteers to take the audience to the, uh, to, to take the mic to the audience, please. What is this word, word C-U-L-T-U-R-E, culture? Anybody? Please participate in a free flow discussion, otherwise I will sleep. Okay? So what is meant? What do you understand by the word culture? Anybody? Every 
HR person would have read by now sitting in this room something or other about the culture or spoken about it. So what is this culture? Yes, ma'am. Uh, culture is something which is imbibed in somebody over a period of time. Okay, so ma'am says culture is something which is imbibed in a person over a period of time. time. Very good. Anybody else? Anybody who would want to differ from her? Yeah. Ongoing process of any organization which we follow for uh, our working process. Ongoing process of an organization which we follow for our re uh, regular uh, work process. For our regular work process. Anybody else? Anybody who would want to challenge her? Day-to-day -day practices that are being done and are convenient. I think culture is that. So day-to-day -day practices, practices that are done in our convenient. In our, Con wherever environment uh, that we are Convenient. As per our, our convenience. Yes. All right, great, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. The unwritten practices going on the practices the that we experience while working at a workplace? Uh, uh, is that what you want to say? Yes, those that are not written anywhere. That is practices. not written anywhere. Very good. Fantastic. Last, last one. Yes. Set of, set of rules, regulations that we have been avoided from the previous generations. So set of rules and regulations that we have been awarded from the previous generations. generations. Fantastic. I like it. Thank you very much. Any, anybody else? Okay. Uh, so culture means the beliefs. I would like to put it in one word, the beliefs, uh, which are also seen in the action. The village which has? Uh, which are also practiced, they are in also action. The beliefs. The beliefs. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. So we have so many definitions of culture. All right. So if I ask you, the air that you breathe in here in this room, is it good, odorless, or bad? Is it sweet, odorless, or bad? Let me put it, rephrase myself. The air in this room. Can you define it? You cannot. You can only feel it. You can sense it. Right? You cannot define. If I tell you that, okay, you define what is odorless, you will say, oh, it is odorless. What is definition odorless is being odorless. So, things which can only be felt, which has difficulty in expression, are called non-tangible things. Aap mehsoos kar sakte you can feel them, but you will find great difficulty in putting words to the explanation of that particular feeling. All right. So, very commonly, when I am addressing a bunch of youngsters like you all, I say, okay, define being in love. It's a feeling, it's an emotion. Okay? You feel nice, you feel happy, you feel like singing, you feel like dancing, you feel you're waiting, you know, for that phone call to come, etc., etc. But if I tell, no, no, those are too many words. Define what is being in love. You say, oh, it's being in love. Or it's splendid, it is fantastic. Splendid, fantastic, great are adjectives. It's not descriptive. Culture is, cannot be descriptive. It is to be felt. People who have worked in more than two or three organizations, you enter an organization with great hope, aspiration, and you feel, oh my God, I made a mistake. How many of you have felt? Have you? Right? Or you enter a place thinking, I don't know what I'm going to find over here. And you feel fantastic. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. And then we move on. Despite a great organization that we are working for, there is something which makes us move on. I haven't worked in one organization. I have moved on and here I am. I'm sure you will not be and you will move on. That thing which keeps us bound to an organization or makes us love an organization or hate an organization is called culture. 
You cannot define it. You can only feel it. You can feel I came to the right place. You can feel you, I did not come to the right place. And this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to throw an elephant in this room and let you all touch the elephant and describe what is that to me by way of presentations. It will be an interactive workshop. You guys turned up late for my session, so I'm going to make you guys late in my session. All right, fair enough? The slide, please. Oh, sorry, I, I am the control. So we are talking about culture and how to transform it. Starting from hiring, to payrolling, to genderless, to OD, to performance management. In 30 years, I have found my niche, what I enjoy doing the most. My most enjoyable journey is when I transform. Transformation of people, transformation of process, transformation of organization. I stand before you in today's HR meet. You answered that. Shared set of values, beliefs, processes that you have inherited or you help create in an organization can go into the fabric called culture. Most of us, we speak about it, but when others speak about it, you say, I don't know. I was told this, so I am telling you this. It must exist somewhere. It is not my duty to guard it. It is not my duty to transform it. It is not my duty to cut out what is the wrong parts of it. And in all the HR presentations, books, etc., etc., you will find what I have written over there is what makes an organizational culture. Symbols, type, value, satisfaction, problem, behavior, leadership issues, interpersonal, feeling of importance, etc., etc. But these are all very small parts of any culture. HR writers say culture has been described as a shared values, principles, traditions, ways of doing things. But Honestly speaking, culture is a perception, it is difficult to describe, and it is always shared. So when we talk about globally, culture is not related or limited to organizations. You cannot say that culture at the Golian Group or at the CG Group or at the Worldlink or any of the companies existing in this country is independent of the country culture. You do not exist in silos. Business doesn't exist in silos. I cannot say that I bring a Shilpi culture which is different from a Golian culture. Or a Golian culture which is different from a Nepal culture. And if tomorrow we have, if we find life on Mars, culture Earth which is different from Mars culture. It is highly, highly intricately woven. A self-sustaining pattern of behavior. And who exhibits that behavior? What is organization made of? Who displays that behavior? People, right? Have you ever thought why somebody comes into the organization and people aspire to work with that organization? And when some people join a particular organization, people start exiting the organization. I don't want to take names over here, but we have seen that in this country based out of Kathmandu. Okay? Big size organizations. Entry of a particular person resulted or equal to exit of employees. Or entry at a leadership level of a person bringing in a positive sentiment for that particular organization and people aspiring to join that organization. What do you think changed? What do you think changed? Company remains the same. Brand remains the same. Profits of the brand may be or maybe not remains the same. But what do you think changed with that change of one person or couple of people? The interpersonal dynamics. Thank you, ma'am. Excellent. 
So today in a post-lunch session, I am supposed to make you learn, which is here. This is an iceberg. What is visible is only 10%. What is not visible to the naked eye is all this. Therefore, to understand, it requires a very high degree of maturity. In order to execute, it requires a very high degree of sharpness of purpose, linkages. In order to result, translate into a quantitative figure of profit, needs time and a group of like-minded people to work with. Okay? What today in this workshop, normally culture workshops, I have been running for three, three, four, four days at a stretch, eight hours a day. So here I'm going to cover it in very brief. What I'm going to make you guys work is over here. What can be seen. What cannot be seen is what you need to learn in order to reach to the top of the iceberg. So you can take a picture of this because you will be needing this when we do the exercise. Just a pointer, look for the words like values, norms, beliefs, feelings, stories, etc. What it does to the organization, it makes the company achieve strategic objectives at minimal cost. I'm using two words, achieve strategic objectives, another word, minimal cost, okay? Remember that. And this is the role. We can have two types of culture, strong culture, weak culture, theory, better to read it, skip through, because it can only be demonstrated in the dynamics, HR analytics, whether it has a strong culture or a weak culture. Differences for every HR person in this room to, you know, keep your eye open. Are your values widely shared by the employees or not? Or only limited to the owners of the business or the leadership team? Do the members know in your team what is important or not? It is only limited to very people that, oh, it's very important for the organization. Most employees can tell stories about company history or heroes or not, which means HR has failed in its duty to make the employees learn about the history and how the company has grown. Do the employees identify with the culture or not? Oh, you know, I'm Shilpi. Sorry. Strong linkages between the values and the behavior or I teach something but I practice some other thing. Does it sound familiar? Do you find people whom you manage from the HR function in these two buckets? The people whom you find on the weaker side are the people with whom you have to work the most. People who are there are your brand ambassadors of HR. What does the business owner want? Oh, give me a performing culture. I've been asked by my promoters. I've worked in very, I work with World Bank, I've worked with promoter-driven companies. Everywhere the same. Give me the performance scores, madam. How are you going to reach to those performance scores? Nobody asks this question. Give me the KPIs. How are you going to reach to those KPIs? Nobody asks, okay? So creating a performance-oriented culture, Innovative culture, responsive culture, ownership and accountable culture, supportive culture, ethical and spiritual culture. These are the most widespread asks from across the businesses and I have worked in three countries, multiple businesses. Therefore, these are where the issues also come. 
Who are the stakeholders in the culture? Everybody who is a stakeholder in the business. Anybody and everybody who is a stakeholder in business is also the custodian of the culture setting for that organization. I narrate you a story. There was a very rich man, let's call him Rob or Bob or whoever. And he bought a huge house on a lakefront. But he was scared of drowning because he didn't know how to swim. So he went and bought a one crore rupee dog. Let's call him Mikey. And the dog came from a breed which specialized in saving people from drowning. Right? Any of you heard the story earlier? Okay. So Mikey came in as a pup to Bob. And Bob was very clear, oh, I bought this dog for one crore rupees. He should remain fit and healthy and happy and be fed on time and hired three more servants for, uh, you know, keeping Mikey in proper ship shape. Because he was what? A dog who specialized in drowning. And Bob was scared of drowning. And he lived in a waterfront house. In order to test after a while, in order to test whether Mikey lived up to the one crore expectation of saving, he jumped into the water. Mikey jumped into the water. Oh, sorry, Bob jumped into the water. What did Mikey do? He jumped in. You people forget, you're sleeping. He is a dog who saves lives of people who drown. Right? So Mikey also jumped. What did Mikey do? He saved Bob and pulled him back. What did Bob do? Oh yes, he was very happy. My dog, money well spent, my dog knows how to save. After a few months, one servant told, Sir, I think this fellow, this dog is now getting too lazy and overfed. He doesn't and he gets dirty and he goes into the water and gets dirty and then we have to bathe him and feed him again and spend money on him. So, please appoint a trainer. Trainer was appointed for Mikey. Trainer trained him not to jump into the water. All right? Because trainer's job was to ensure that Mikey does not get into the water and get dirty. So, he was a good trainer. He trained. Mikey was a good dog. He learned. And to test it, one day, Bob again jumped into the lake. So what did Mikey do? He jumped. Despite the training, he jumped into the water, pulled Bob back. The trainer gave him a mighty thrashing. Because the dog was not supposed to jump into the water. Mikey was following his natural instinct. Okay? Trainer made him learn something. Let us call it culture. Okay. One day, Mikey actually slipped into the water. Uh, sorry, Bob actually sl uh, uh, slipped into the water. So what do you guess? What did Mikey do? He was sitting. Why? Why was Mikey sitting? And he was looking, Bob struggling. But why was Mikey sitting? Because he was trained. Because he was cultured not to jump into the water. All right? Culture can happen through trainings, as ma'am said, processes, as somebody said from our previ previous generations, who pass on those things to us. But is it right in today's era? Are we doing what is needed? Are we interested? Have we tried to make a transformational change? If yes, have we failed? If I ask you and I say we'll play truth or dare, truth, I failed. I failed in two of the organizations. Any of you made an attempt and failed truth or dare? Right? Or you have not tried, you have played safe. 
you have been Mikey sitting at the, you know, lakeside shore. You have been educated to be an HR practitioner. The bobs of the world have made you Mikey's under training. And you do not follow your natural instinct. If you do not follow your natural instinct of being an HR professional, do you expect others to do so? Hard questions. You guys need to answer. Have I had to quit a job because my belief did not coincide with the uh, owners of the business? Yes. Have I regretted when I was jobless in between? Today, 30 years later, do I regret? No. And why do I not regret? Because I know where I made a transformation. It has made a difference in the life of 10,000 people. I don't care what other lacks think or do not think about me. That is why I said in this room today, we are going to do learning with a lot of truth and dare. When we enter the organization, my reality here also, my reality, the team told me something, A, B, C, beautiful. Few people, after a few days, told me, oh, we don't do this, don't do this, this is wrong, need to manage that, need to manage this. So there are ropes that are evident and we skip in the organization, but there are many ropes which we do not skip. But people tell us. This is called the whisper culture. Truth or dare, how many of you have witnessed the whisper culture in your, this or any of the previous organization? Truth or dare, or rest of sleeping? If so many people who sit over here and say they have not experienced it, Nepal is a superb company, uh, country with superb organization cultures. In India, 99% of the people would raise their hands because we experience it and we own it up that we experience it. All right? Time to do some homework, classwork, sorry, in this room. So, big crowd, the events that we need to do would require people to move in. I don't want to organize because it's a huge crowd over here, but can you guys form uh, 10 groups amongst all of you? I'm giving you five minutes. Rearrange yourself, please. I need only 10 tables. So all of you have to fit in almost equally across 10 tables. Quickly, quickly, rearrange yourself, sirs and ma'ams. And I would request volunteers to help the groups with chart papers. Choose which type of company you want to be and preferably one table, only one company. But please make a representation. Type 1 company is a 50-year-old manufacturing organization managed by second generation, promoter driven. It is an aging employee population but with stable profits. Got the scenario loud and clear? The second type is an edutech startup in the field of cutting edge technology with BI, AI, ML courses. Managed by young entrepreneurs, very, very cash strapped, but high on energy and ideation. Third type is a 10 year old design firm with so good days, but seeing decline of profit steadily. 
has a disciplined team and established strong processes to run, but struggling for standing out from the crowd. Okay? Type 4, 15-year-old large format retail chain, which suffered massive losses in COVID and struggling. And Type 5, 75-year-old TV manufacturing brand which saw very good days and now seeing steady decline of profits due to loss of market share. Pick your company and then I'll tell you what you need to do for the company. Company selected, fast, fast, we are running out of time. The group has to be having a consensus on what company it is establishing. So what is very common over here is that the companies are struggling. Is it an HR problem or not? If it is an HR problem, as a head of HR, in a company scenario like this, how are you going to transform the company existing from loss of profits to profitability? From the HR perspective, we are not talking about change in the HR culture, we are talking about change through HR in the organization culture. What needs to change and how will you go about it? I understand you guys are not core business guys. You know the company, what the business is, you know what the problem is. You are the head of HR. You cannot be Mikey. If the bob is in the water, what are you going to do? Transform the company using culture as the base. Feel free to ask me cues. I will give you hints. But I want you to rack your professional capabilities to do this. Remember the iceberg. Remember the keywords. Pardon? So you are discussing amongst yourself that as HR, what are you going to do to make the companies turn around? What could be the key problem or how can you identify and suggest solution? How can you build a performance culture? I'm giving you 10 minutes to do it, and then representatives of the groups, I will call at random, have to come and make a presentation. Verbal.
in each of the scenario, you are free to create your assumptions that why it could have happened and what needs to be changed or transformed, but from the culture perspective. The table can call me, ask, tell me what type of organization you have chosen. If you are unable to create story, I will create for you. So ma'am, I want you guys to tell that why did you choose the company type which you chose? And, right? So why? Why did you choose it? Sure, so we've chosen type 4, which is a 15-year-old large format retail chain, which suffered massive losses in COVID and is struggling to stay afloat. The reason we chose this company is because a lot of us are familiar with a company like that in Nepal. So for us, in our head, we are dealing with something that is sort of like Pat Bhattini supermarket. So because everybody was familiar to this type of business, we have a jumble of everybody from different formats. So that's why we picked type 4. Great. So, uh, good idea, and I think it is one of the easiest because it's a very real-time company. So, uh, what was the problem? Can you make the problem statement? How did you approach it, and what will you suggest as a HR head to the business team? Sure. So, one of the main assumptions that we have done over here is we've assumed that because Type A is a large retail format organization, we believe that the problem is because a lot of this is, like, we are assuming that it's going to be a company with a large workforce and a lot of the employees might be in the verge of a burnout because of COVID. So we've also looked at uh, news from you know, abroad, like in Amazon, et cetera. We've heard of these things happening. So we've taken that model. We've defined the problem in that way. And some of the solutions that you will see are targeted towards employee burnout. And like you said, very weak culture maybe in the organization. Because it could be that uh, right before or during COVID, there might have been a lot of people who have been onboarded but haven't been uh, they didn't get the chance to soak in the company culture yet. So that's also a part of our problem definition. Right. Very good, very good assumption. What's your name? My name is Preksha. Preksha. Very good assumption by the group and uh, Preksha for leading this, uh, coming over here to lead this presentation. Retail sector suffered massive, massive, massively after COVID because the stores were closed. There were no footfalls. They were stuck with a huge lot of inventory. And we all know the story of how it went in the two years of COVID. These were also the companies worldwide which shed employees at that point of time. There were massive layoffs because of COVID, shutdown operations, and of course, decreased profitability. As a nature, <coughs> As 
as an HR head for this retail chain. So now it is your duty to build a strong fabric of culture. What were your assumptions? What will be your actions? Sure. So we've come up with four different actions, action points that we are going to be like targeting for each of the assumptions that we've made. So like I said, the first assumption was that we have probably been able to onboard a lot of people who haven't been uh, through a very good induction plan. So they don't know much about the company culture. Maybe they have been like asked to come and start working the very next day. So like ma'am told us earlier, they haven't heard those stories uh, and they haven't heard from their leaders what the organization stands for. So the organization that I come from is Unilever. And in our case, I have found personally that more frequent connects and town halls with leaders has been one of the biggest thing that has worked for us. So even during COVID times, we used to have calls with our global CHRO, global brand leaders who would come into our MS Teams uh, screen almost like every fortnight. And they would instill, they would talk about what they have done, what has worked, what has not worked. And although most of us were working from home at that time, it felt like we were part of that culture. So we would also try to do the same thing again in this retail business by instilling more frequent connects. And because this is a much more of a frontline role, we would like to do this connects uh, in person. So that's the first assumption and the first action. Very good. Take. Very good. The second one is well-being at the forefront. So COVID more than ever has showed us how important well-being is. So at least for us, like well-being is something that we have always done in Unilever. But then, of course, the value of that came into the forefront when COVID struck. And again, over here, well-being doesn't just mean physical well-being. It's also about mental, emotional, and for us, purposeful well-being. So I'm assuming that even in this retail store that I will be the CHRO of, I'll be focusing on all of these uh, check boxes, which goes much further than just physical well-being. The third one is upskilling and reskilling. Now, like I said, the major assumption that I am making over here is that we have either laid off a lot of people or newly inducted a lot of people, like, and people are on the verge of burnout. Burnout, as I have seen in my limited experience, usually comes when people haven't been invested enough in when it comes Absolutely. to their capability. So that is one of the places where I will be going to the management and asking for them to invest, like give us the budget, give us the time and the resources, not just the money, to invest in our the people. right method. So upskilling and reskilling. The fourth one is revamping the reward system. So because uh, that being said, while I'm asking for investment, I must also deliver savings for the organization because that's what a true HR business partner does. And uh, so maybe another like assumption that I'm making here because it's Nepal, maybe this large 15 year old retail chain might have been, uh, you know, very over indexed on fixed costs, like fixed gross and very under indexed on, let's say, incentives and variable pay. But then uh, I would be changing that Great. to ensure that uh, there is a bigger, like uh, there's a more balanced um, distribution Pops. of compensation. Yes. And whatever I can probably, like this is not a cost cutting thing, but then if there are any savings delivered from this, then again, I'll be able to give this back to the business for reinvestment, uh, ideally in my people, because upskilling is also part of the thing. And the last thing we talked about is robust workforce planning. So again, I was talking about the news about uh, massive layoffs in Amazon and other retail chains. So uh, layoffs are never a good thing for the company culture. So we will make sure that we do our workforce planning in such a way that we don't have to hire large amounts of people every time there's a boom and lay off people every time there is a little bit of a struggle in the market. So those are the five Fantastic. things. Fantastic. Big hand to the Team Alpha over here. <laughs> right actions towards the right path to address a business transformation by addressing the culture from an HR perspective. We just have time for one more group. Any other group which would want to come up? Not type four, any other type? Come and present. I saw so many edutech startups over here. Come on.
we are hard pressed on time, so a little fast, please. Um, good afternoon. So everyone. again, the same as them. Which no, no. type? We are. Uh, we have. And why? Type three. Why before you begin? Uh, we have choose type three uh, as our institute. Yeah, the question itself uh, says that a 10 years old design firm which uh, uh, good days but seeing decline of profit has a disciplined team and est uh, established strong processes to run but struggling for standing out from the crowd as uh, it is a 10 year old organization and as a team as this uh, sentence itself explains that it has a disciplined term and uh, rules which is being practiced from last 10 years and there is no change and every coming year is uh, bringing new changes, new challenges and uh, uh, any organization that is working in uh, old uh, culture, old challenges will never cope up in run coming organization. So we have basically uh, identified two things. Uh, first is our problem identification because of uh, what is the reason behind not having a profit or a um, accurate profit that we want to. And our pro uh, first problem that we think uh, is old established culture and process which is being practiced uh, which is being practiced and never the, uh, our seniors or our uh, management team have thought of changing it. And secondly, it is a uh, uh, lack of knowledge about market demands where, what uh, we are working for. And uh, it might be the main reasons of profit loss, uh, 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 reason of loss also. So to, uh, uh, as a solution to the problem, we have uh, uh, mentioned few things that we as HR can work on to uh, mm -hmm. have a good profit in our organization. Mm -hmm. uh, as our first uh, thing is enrolling new strategies, practices, uh, and redefined processes. Mm -hmm. As it includes, uh, as I, I have already said that, this organization is working in old culture, old discipline, old manners, so um, to get, a, to, uh, to be uh, stable, uh, to be established in current scenario, we need to learn new things, we need to grab new opportunities, we need to uh, learn new things. And as being a child, we can uh, enroll new strategies, processes, practices okay. to uh, make our employee do good things and have a good uh, work on uh, our organization. Guys, if you don't listen to her, it is your loss. <laughs> yeah, continue. Secondly, training and deployment among the employees and required sources. As training, as learning is an ongoing process, learning always uh, improves our skills, our ability, and training and development is a main and core thing that human resource can do. Uh, rather than other things speaking about doing this and that, training and development is the major thing that a human resource, HR department, uh, department can give to, uh, to an employee and related resources. So to adapt new thing and to, uh, to su sustain in market, we can give training, development, uh, skills, uh, related educations to our employees and required sources. Lastly, uh, intake of new technologies and young talents, as uh, mostly we have a practice of uh, 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 hiring uh, uh, experienced people and not giving chance to young talents. As, uh, as I am also a young one, mm -hmm. I would prefer, <laughs> prefer that organization gives uh, uh, chances to young talent, as young talent have a young brain, young knowledge, uh, new knowledge, and new, uh, uh, new things that they can uh, enroll in the organization to uh, grab, uh, grab profit uh, success in the organization, so giving uh, chances to uh, new, young, uh, talented uh, people will uh, lead uh, organization to achieve a good uh, thing. And uh, adapting a new technologies can help to have a good profit. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Shraddha. Shraddha. So where, where, where are you working for? I'm working in Reliable Nepal Life Insurance. Thank you very much. All right.
sorry, no time. I would have loved to, but uh, is there a table which has not reached to a uh, conclusion? So all of you have reached to a conclusion. The Shraddha, uh, okay. Please stand up. Please stand up. A big hand for this girl. I'll tell you why. In HR, 99% we jump to the action. All of us. We never try to understand the cause. We ha I have given problem statements. Thank you, Shadda, sit down. The lady began with the problem identification. All right. She said the problem is it is a design firm. And she correlated. I told you the correlation is in this. Discipline. All the five scenarios from the companies where I have worked at, problems faced, transformation, some failures, some uh, this thing. Very large size design firm, very famous. To set up in their core value system, disciplined team. All right. What does a design firm need to succeed? Come on, guys. Imagination, innovation, enthusiasm, ideation. That is what makes the design success. I have given you the business design. I have given you the constraint discipline. It is like you want to innovate with the stable processes, structured processes, a highly disciplined team. You want a designer to think out of the box, but come suited. It doesn't happen. Either you are hiring a schizophrenic, or you are making a Mikey out of a talent. All right? Identify what is your business. Identify what is causing problem to the business. And it is not the CEO's job, or it is not limited to the business uh, people. It is your job as HR. You can't be Mikey, not my job. Right? That is initiating a culture and initiating a transformation in a business. If the business was all green, good, fantastic, super, why should it hire you? Not needed. They can save the money on the HR department. Hard-hitting truths. So, the time constraint, I would have loved to give you a framework. It starts with the vision, mission, and value setting of the organization. Okay? I bet, I bet my salary of one year, nobody in this room can tell what is the exact mission of your company, what is the exact vision of your company, and what values are existing by heart. Can you? That is why I bet my one year CTC. <laughs> right? As HR, we don't own it. If we don't own it, darling, nobody will own it. You will not even know what are your values. You will not even know what to transform, what to change, what to create. For a structured transformation in an organization, you need common goals, values, beliefs. You need to put structure and systems. You need to scan the environment totally. You need to follow the traditions and sing stories about it or songs about it. And you need to have your culture ambassadors not from HR, from the business, and call them heroes of the business. This is a very, very scientific method that we follow in any transformation approach. You are free to take pictures, but it is my copyright material. As I said, I was given something which normally takes three to four days. I'm wrapping it up in short. The transformation begins by identifying your as-is culture, the problem statement, the strengths and the gap areas, and then you begin the 
transformation journey. Very, very, very simple five steps. Identify problem, revisit your mission, vision, define your values, support the practices, set the leader behaviors, establish blueprint of employee behavior, continuous improvement activities, reset, reset, rethink, reset. And that is the essence of culture transformation in any organization. I believe. I believe, and my belief lies in my experience of transforming large-size organizations. It is not something you are, not a Shilpi or a Pragya or a Preksha or a Rasna or a Rasmika or anybody. It is what you do for any organization. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. It was lovely interacting with you. Thank you so much, uh, Shilpi ma'am, for, uh, for, for making us all active and making us think about so many things about culture. We'd like to present you with a token of appreciation. At this moment, may I call upon uh, the CEO of Growth Sellers Private Limited, uh, Sunil Ojha, sir, to kindly come forward and present ma'am with a token of appreciation. And ma'am, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. We would have loved to hear more from you, but uh, definitely in future, we will be meeting you and learning a lot for you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge on the culture of the companies. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.